this is in the hands of the Lord. We know that He, he knows what is right for all of us. And just depend on Him. Trust in Him. Pray to Him. Sing to Him. And all this will be history. There's things yet to come. If this situation prolongs, there's going to be other little things. It's like a chain reaction. Just ask God to prepare us and prepare you for what's coming if it prolongs. If it's his, in His mercy and He hears the prayers, and His will is to protect His people, to put a stop to this. But if we have to suffer through all this, let it be for His honor, for His will. Trust in Him always, believing in Him. Let's do this in Jesus' name. I have the word today, it's something that God gave me, and I'm going to read from Matthew 5, verses 13 and 14. And it goes like this. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is then, then forced good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden of the fruit of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it's given light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. And they, they may see your good works and, glor and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This is something that applies to us all right now. For apparently when we have the situation in hand, it becomes darkness to a lot of people. And we have to realize that everything has a purpose. Right now, it is for the servants of people, the servants of God to be, be used. This is the opportunity to, to be used of God. So brothers, be safe. Follow the instructions and be safe. Hopefully the heat will eliminate the virus, but if it doesn't, we have to prepare for what's coming. The economics, lack of food, money, other things, prepare for them. But most of all, it is our duty and our privilege and honor to pray to the one we believe on. Pray and fast as we have been doing. Depending on God, that's His will. Whatever He desires, that will be His will. Now is the time to prove our faith on Him. No matter what entails this virus, we will believe in Him and trust in Him. Now, the coronavirus uh, has significance. The corona in Spanish means crown. Virus means poison, dead, not working, destroyed. In the crown, we have five crowns that will be offered to us. We are faithful. And there are five crowns that we should receive. In 2 Timothy 4 8, it says, Therefore, there, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And there's five really, five crowns the crown of life, the incorruptible crown, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, and the crown of rejoicing, and the crown of life. The crown of life signifies. Not to be afraid, but be faithful, even to the point of death. Revelation 2.10 The incorruptible, incorruptible crown, 1 Corinthians 9.25, it talks about being self-denial, preserving, preserving your faith, preserving yourself unto the Lord, unto the end. Self-denial, 
basically because and at the point of this American dream, we have become very egoistic. People have become self-centered. And you can't really have a self-denial spirit when you are like that. But maybe this is the reason this is happening to us, to change our act, return to Him, return to the first love. We also have the, the incorruptible crown, that's the self-denial, the crown of glory, 1 Peter 5, 2 or 4, it signifies uns, un, unselfish love, being a good leader at home, and naturally serving God. The crown of glory talks about being a leader. It talks about uh, serving, being a servant, being a leader at home, your friends, your neighbors, a leader that will lead them to Christ, a leader with examples and the virtue of His Spirit, recognizing that God is in you and He talks for you. And you walk in this, this world because the Bible says that the, that the step of a good man are ordered by God. And if we are in the Lord's hands, doing the will of God, his steps are the one we follow. The crown of rejoicing, it, it signifies the evangelism, being an example of a good servant and witness of the power of God. The crown of rejoicing is something that at this point, when darkness is around us, we can portray the joy of the Holy Ghost, the joy of being used of God, of being able to witness what He is in our lives. So we have the one who loves and anticipate the coming of the Lord. We have love and anticipate the coming of the Lord. This is the crown of righteousness. We rejoice in the Lord. So, if we rejoice in the Lord, he emphasized that rejoicing in the Lord, suffering the tribulation as we are now, but constantly in prayer. This is what the Bible says, that every Christian, everything under the sun, should have these attributes that we can have either to be a servant, a witness of a servant, a witness of serving God, a witness of being in evangelistic spirit. In Matthew 5, 13, we read that we are the salt of the earth. But if we are the salt, have we lost our savior? Has it, has it really been there for nothing? In the old days, and even now, the salt was used to preserve me and other things. Uh, but the, the salt was always, and now times, put in a, in a shaker, put in a little bottle, a little shaker. And sometimes the shakers get wet and then they get plugged up. And they cannot use the salt. They, the salt is not used. And so the food doesn't taste as good without the salt. It's the same thing. The Word of God, a crown of rejoicing, won't taste as good. Won't be able to proclaim the gospel of God if it doesn't have the salt, if it doesn't have the spirit, if it doesn't have the love. It will not taste good. So the opportunity to evangelize is right now by using and applying the salt, for we are the salt, rejoicing as we do it, evangelize, be a servant, love God, 
the virus is trying to put fear on us, trying to destroy the destiny that we have chosen, a destiny to be in the hands of the Lord, a destiny that has been given to us, and when it was given to us, our life has changed. There was a salt of heaven. The Spirit of God of heaven changed our, our hearts, changed our minds. And now we want to put ourselves in the, and consider ourselves in the destiny to be in the hands of God forevermore. But the virus has tried to put fear, as it has to many people right now. Fear, fear has destroyed the peace of life, has destroyed many things that are, we're all we're all in chain to believing that, we're, that there's not going to be any hope. But when there's salt, when there is the Word of God, where there is the Spirit of the Lord, where there's love, we can always really see the hope of God. Even though situations and conditions are not as we want it to be, but one thing that we do have, and we want it to be that way, is the Spirit of the Lord. If we, if, even if we're confined in the doors, in the houses, and we're separated, those that rely on God are continuing worship Him, continue uniting yourself with the Lord in the family. This is a time to really describe to your children, to your wife, to your spouse, how much appreciation you have for them. But the virus itself has tried to put fear and to lose the aspect of really knowing that we depend, not on man, we depend on God. The American dream that so-called now has produced men to become lazy. Everything is a love of ease. We have become selfish. We have become opportunities, reaching for the sky, no matter what we do, and not pleasing God. We are the, like the salt that is lost, that can be taken out of the shaker. We are still in the shaking, shaker, not realizing that the salt is, doesn't come out. You can shake all you want, but if it doesn't come out, the trueness of the Spirit of God the trueness of the love of God, if it doesn't, it doesn't come out, the soul doesn't come out, your spirit doesn't come out, your joy doesn't come out, being also used of God doesn't come out, it's lost. But thank God that we can place this appreciation that yes, we do have an American dream, and it was all because of the Lord. It became all because He loved us so much. That he wants the best of all of us. But remembering who we gotta give thanks to, not to men, not to anybody else, but to the Lord our Savior. So let's get out the chaker. Let's spread that salt. Make it, it wonderful, rejoicing in the hope. So what has happened is that God saw that this American dream has turned into loving yourself more. As the Bible says, there will be people that will love themselves more than God. Not caring about anything, not caring about serving God, not caring about giving time, giving your attention, but your love of each, your love of yourself. And that's what has taken place. I hope that we have learned our lesson and we can change our mind. We can change and go back to the first love, recognizing who is our maker, who is our father, who is our creator, realizing that without him we're nothing. And he talks about a sign that we're supposed to understand the sign of the fig tree. When the branches are tender and they take forth branches, it's a time 
And we're seeing signs right, in, signs right now that we should understand that it's a time to prepare ourselves, a time to return and be united, united in Him, have faith in Him, believe in Him. Even as Job, when he suffered the consequences, everything was taken away from him, he had the faith. He kept believing. He was a person that no matter what, he loved the Lord. He said, the Lord gave us, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be his wonderful name. This is what we should be assuring ourselves. No matter what takes place, no matter what happens, no matter what, how it looks, no matter how dark it might get, we have to figure out in our state of mind that God has the last answer, that God has the last word, that God will be with us no matter what. So praise Him, worship Him. Talk to Him. Make a sacrifice Him. Paul talked to the Ephesians and he said, put on the armor of God that you might be able to stand against the walls of the devil. You have to put on the chill of faith. This is what we have to put on right now. Believe in that even, even though it's dark, even though there's fear, even though man has no answer, but we should understand that God has the answer. And with Him, everything will be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Put on the helmet of salvation. Protect what you know. When you put on the helmet of salvation, you are the head. You need to have your head that has the knowledge, that has the, the Word of God in your, in your heart, in your head, and let them, the Word of God, direct you to the destiny of being with the Lord, with the knowledge of God. That is how we put on the helmet of God, protecting your head with the Word of God, realizing that that Word no matter what fear, no matter what man says, no matter how man might portray life, like there's no answer, but God is the answer. God has the direction for all of us. Somebody say amen. amen. You serve and have faith in, the, in His Word. The anointing of His Word is there. Use it. Do not leave it in the, in the shaker. Use the salt. Use the light. Remember, in the Lord, we are the head and not the tail. As a church, we should be putting the example to the whole community, the whole world, that God is alive, that God exists, that He has the power to change everything. No matter, even, even if this virus was made, handmade by man, we don't know, but we have to realize that no matter what man does to destroy the world, God will build it. God will edify it. God will give us the word that we need to stand on the word and believe on Him rather than men. Believe on Him rather than situations and everything around us. Remember, we are the head of God. We are the head in God, I'm sorry. In the next few days, prayer and fasting will continue with thanksgiving to God for what he's going to what he's going to do for his people. We don't know. In the next two weeks, we'll see what faithfulness, what faith, what prayers. We'll see what God will do. Because he will always answer. And he says, only to one just person. If he sees the faith, the love of that one just person, he will answer us. And there's many of us believing that God will answer. So, I ask that we continue believing and having faith in God, believing that He will restore this land. If you are humble, if we are humble and we seek His face, He will heal our land. God bless you. Remember, be careful, be safe. Follow the instructions. Soon and very soon, we'll be together again. God bless you.